Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we'll be talking about how you can edit star trail photography in Lightroom and Photoshop right after this. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the video. On this channel, we talk landscape photography, taking you out into the field, showing you how to shoot, post-processing techniques, and then even gear reviews. So if you're new here, consider subscribing below. In this video, we'll be talking star trail photography. How do you edit those? A lot of people are intimidated by that process, not knowing how to use Lightroom and Photoshop together to create these stunning star trail photographs that you see taken out in the field. So I'm gonna show you how to edit these photographs using Lightroom and Photoshop simultaneously to create stunning star trail photographs. So what I'm gonna do now is send it straight over to the computer screen so we can see the entire process of editing star trail photographs. All right guys, the first process that you wanna take is importing these photographs into Lightroom. Now you're gonna have multiple photographs that you're working with, so don't be shocked if you bring them in and you see tons of photographs that you have to go through and edit. I'll show you a very easy way to go through and edit those. What you want to do is select the very first photograph in the sequence, and here it just looks like a photograph taken with various pinpoint stars. But what we want to do is develop this so that we can add these settings onto every single photograph in the entire sequence. So you click on your develop module and you're just gonna start making minor tweaks to these photographs. So, I mean, I might adjust white balance um, in here to bring out more color in the sky. I might adjust the exposure slightly just to bring in a little more color, more contrast bring down the highlights some to get rid of the ambient light that came in, decrease shadows, increase whites, decrease blacks. We're just making really minor adjustments in these overall photographs so that we can merge them together and make subtle tweaks, more advanced tweaks at the very end after we're done merging these. So vibrance and saturation is already up. And I think that's really all I want to do with these photographs. And every night photograph is going to vary depending on location shot, how much ambient light was in the atmosphere, uh, cloud cover, all those things go into how much you want to tweak these photographs. So these edits specifically might not apply to yours, but this is just showing you, you make minor edits initially to the photograph and then apply those throughout. So here we have back in the viewpoint, back in the library module, we can see every single photograph that we have. And here's the first photograph that we just edited, and it, you can tell it looks different. And you might be thinking, well, how am I gonna go through and edit every single one of these photographs? But we can easily sync these settings. So all you have to do is click on the very first image in your sequence, scroll all the way down to the bottom of your sequence, the last photograph that you shot, hold down your shift key and then click on that last photograph so that every single one is selected. Then what you're gonna do is select sync settings that's down here in the bottom right corner. And when you click that, it brings up this panel that asks you what you want to apply from the adjustments you made to the first photograph to all of the photographs. And since I just made general edits, like no real cropping or adjustment brushes or spot removal, I'm just gonna select check all to make sure that everything is synchronized into these photographs. And then I'm gonna hit synchronize. And it will apply these changes to every single photograph and it, it'll start making these. And once you do that, it will apply these immediately. So. Now, all we have to do is, since we made these changes, we want to merge these in Photoshop to apply the star trail effect. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the sequence that's selected, and I'm gonna go to Edit In, and I'm gonna go to Open as Layers in Photoshop. I'm not going to select Edit in Adobe Photoshop. I'm just going to select open as layers and it will start opening these photographs as layers in Photoshop. Now since we're dealing with tons of photographs, this is going to take a really long time. So I'm gonna jump ahead to when they're already loaded into Photoshop so we can pick up the process there. 
All right, so after you load everything into Photoshop, this is what your screen will look like. You'll have your very first image on the screen and then over in your layers panel, you'll have all of your layers organized into chronological order. This makes it really easy for us to merge and blend all of these into a star trail photo merge. So all you have to do to do that is just like we did in Lightroom, select your very first image, scroll all the way down to your last layer, hold down your shift key, select the last layer, and then you're gonna wanna come up here to your blending options. Now for default, it'll probably say normal, but we're going to change that. And we're going to change that to the light and blend. And what that does is it brings out any light from a layer and blends it all into one visible layer that you can use to do your star trails. And once I click this, you'll see everything that has been lit in every single layer. So we'll see our star trails, we'll see any light painting that occurred during the photograph and we'll have a lot of light painting show up in this one specifically because every car that drove under this bridge illuminated the bridge with their headlights and we also had some flashlights on the bridge itself on the left side of the screen so i'm just going to hit lighten and it's going to show all of our star trails and all of the light painting that occurred so that's basically what you do to reveal star trails in these star paths now you'll see we have a lot of unwanted light in this as well including some of the light painting that occurred from the flashlights that shined on the left side of the bridge if you want to get rid of those all you have to do is find the layers where that occurred and toggle this visual eyeball on or off so i can toggle all of these layers off and we won't see that portion of the light painting anymore in the photograph. So I'm just gonna find every single one of those and select those as off. And that looks a lot better to me and we can work with this even more. You also need to know when you turn layers off, it's going to cause gaps in the star trails. So you have to decide for yourself, do you want that portion of the photograph out like we had with the left side of the bridge and have gaps in the star trails or do you want to leave that in and have solid trails throughout? I think the risk reward to that in this photograph is worth removing those because it was such a distracting light. But if you'll see, we do have gaps in the very beginning of these star trails since that was at the early portion of the star trail photo sequence. So. Not a big deal to me with this photograph specifically, but you'll have to decide that for yourself in your own Star Trail merges. But now I wanna show you how to remove those airplanes. First, we'll have to flatten all of these layers into one image. And since all of your layers are already selected, all we have to do is right click on those and we go to flatten image. And that's just going to merge all of these together and it'll ask you to discard the layers that you removed from the overall photo blend and I just click OK to remove those to shrink this file size down just a little bit. So now we have one layer background as this photograph and what I want to do is just show you real quick. I'm not going to remove every single one of these airplane paths, but I want to show you how to do it so you can do it with your own Star Trail photographs because this takes a really long time to do and it's just one of those things that happens in a Star Trail photograph. And I'll just do two portions of this because in circular Star Trails, once you get closer to the center and more circular patterns, it's a lot more difficult to remove these airplane paths from the photograph. But let's take this path for example, and I'll just zoom real close on it. And all I wanna do is use the clone stamp tool to remove these. Your clone stamp tool is on the left side toolbar and you just select that clone stamp. And since you just have one layer, that's all you're working with. And what I like to do and what makes it really easy is just hover your selection. And I like to make this pretty small to make this a lot less obvious and have a hard edge on it. And we can adjust the hardness of the edge and the size right here, or you can adjust the size with your left and right bracket keys. But I like to keep my clone stamp brush really small and start there. So I'm just gonna hold down my Alt key 
or your option key if you're using a Mac and you'll see a target pop up and I'm just going to click right here and I like to get right on a hard line of the star trail because I can easily line this up. You'll see as I move, it'll take that selected area with me. I just line this up with the rest of the star trail and I'll just click and start painting this out. And with these more linear star paths, it's really easy because I can just click and drag and it'll follow the entire star path and I can easily eliminate this entire line. And I, I can even keep going through all the way down here. You have to be aware though, that as you move closer to the center of your star trails, they become more compact and more circular. So these, you can't continue dragging this all the way through because you'll see here, like my lines get off. So I have to redo this selection of where I want to clone stamp every so often, especially when I get really, really close to the center if you have any airplanes moving through the center of your photograph. So what I'm just gonna do here is select this star trail right here I'm gonna come down, line it up like we just did, and I'm gonna start painting this out. Now you'll see as we move, it'll start getting off a little bit in the star trail path. This is what I meant by as they become more circular, you have to constantly adjust that. So I just move little by little and then I'll readjust when I get to another hard edge. So I'll hit my Alt or Option key and readjust that. Readjust, paint this out. And then once I get to the next hard edge, I'll reselect and readjust what I was painting out. And this takes a really long time. It's really tedious to do, but it's totally worth it if you want really good star trails with no distractions throughout your photograph. Really easy to do, and these blank spaces are the easiest part to do it in. So I'm just gonna hold down Alt key in this blank space and just paint this one out right here. So that's a good example of two different kinds of painting out airplane paths in star trails. So I'm just gonna fit this to screen again so we can zoom back out. But I'm not gonna do every single airplane path because that would take a really long time, but this is a good example of how you do that. So I'm gonna finish this photograph up in Lightroom. All I have to do is go to File, Save, and it'll save that into my Lightroom library that I can toggle and scroll down to. So here's the photograph that we just edited in Photoshop to reveal those star trails. I'm just gonna make a few final edits for this. This is when we've already made our, our initial edits when we did the bulk edit to every single file type. But just to smooth this up a bit, I may want to add like some more saturation or vibrance just to make this pop out a little bit more. I had more oranges come through, so I'm gonna reduce the orange saturation in this photograph to make the bridge a little bit more uh, white. And then I might also increase my orange luminance to make that bridge pop out a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. What I always like to do with any photograph is increase my blue primary saturation slider. That's kind of like my trick for photography editing in Lightroom. And I'll just increase that all the way. You see it adds a lot of saturation, but I'll just dial that down until I like what I see. And you'll see it also brings out a lot of blues, but once you use that, you can just scroll back up to your blue saturations and bring that down. Because the blue primary saturation will add a lot more yellow tints, a lot more blue tints, a lot more magenta tints, and it looks really good with any photograph. I just like to try that out with every single photograph. All right guys, that does it for the overall process of editing Star Trail photographs. It's a pretty simple process to go through. If you liked this video, you might also like this video on how I actually shot these photographs in the field, or you might like this video that's recommended to you based on your search terms.